Should one work on mastering the physical aspects in one's life before seriously devoting oneself to the guru and spirituality? Excellent question, and let me say that no, it's not a sequential order. The truth of the matter is, in fact, let me go a little deeper. What you're asking is a question akin to why is there the Ashtanga system in yoga? In other words, why are there these eight limbs that focus on every aspect of the person from the physical, emotional, mental, uh, psychological, the psychic, nervous system, uh, consciousness itself, identity, etc., etc., etc. No, the idea is that we are to cultivate all of these things simultaneously. It's not that we are, oh, to first become physically perfect and just leave the spiritual aside. And then when we're physically perfect, no, now we can focus on the physical, first of, on the spiritual. First of all, there is no becoming physically perfect. <laughs> so this idea that, oh, when we do that, then we'll focus on, on the spiritual. No, that's the spiritual will be pushed further and further into the future. Um, that's the first thing. The second thing is that while there is indeed difference between all these ontological stages of the individual, all these ontological features, I should say, of the individual, while it's understood that they are different at the same time, one of the processes of yoga and spirituality generally is to have them all work in harmony. This being the case, no, we are to work on every aspect of ourselves simultaneously. So this is why, indeed, I tell my students, and for that matter, I myself, I don't just tell them, I live this and that I'm their living example. Uh, am I a spiritual person? Some would say uh, <laughs> I'm a spiritual person. I also go to the gym and I lift weights for, I don't have quite as much time now as I did five years ago. Now it's about an hour a day, four days a week. But I lift weights, I lift weights, I lift weights simultaneously. It's not that I did one first and then the other. Uh, no, we are to take care of ourselves physically. And that also means health-wise, not just exercise. That's important. We are to take care of our health. We are to make sure that, we, that our body, our mind, everything is, is working in full to full capacity in a very healthy sort of way, while also doing our meditation daily, while also reading the Vedic scriptures. So no, we are to do both simultaneously. And interestingly, I'm not surprisingly, one helps the other. When you are a meditator, oh, trust me, when you are a meditator, uh, you're someone who you like to go to the gym. And of course, the gym can mean anything. It doesn't matter what you do, whether it's cardio, um, you know, anything like this. For me, it's lifting. You know, I do a lot of cardio, too. I love taking walks in nature. That tends to be my cardio. And my students will tell you, when I say walk, I speed walk. Many of them are half my age, and I leave them behind like half a mile as I'm walking. <laughs> Am I right? No, so they can hear you, please. Yes. Yes. <laughs> uh, you know, I believe in doing cardio, but for me, it's especially lifting weights. I love lifting weights. Now, the thing is, as a meditator, lifting weights is easy for me. You know, it's something where when I'm lifting weights, I am focused. You know, I don't wear little, little earbuds. A lot of people listen to music. I don't listen to music. I don't need to. I'm focused as I'm lifting the weights. And as a result, I have perfect form, etc. I can lift very heavy weight. I can go on for a long time. And for me, it's almost like an extension of my meditation. But then also vice versa. Because I'm, I'm pretty physically fit, I can sit like this for a long time and meditate without discomfort. So indeed, they help each other. So uh, Blue Suzaku, do both at the same time. And indeed, not just both, do all of it at the same time. Work on yourself in every aspect of yourself. Work on your career at the same time. Work on your knowledge at the same time, etc., etc. So yes, all simultaneously.